evening. Welcome to Studio 10 Talks. I'm Patrick Cassidy. I'm the Artistic Director for Studio 10. Uh, here's our show again. Once a month, we get to bring this show back. And I, every, time, uh, every time I see that opening, I, I'm astounded by the people who have done this show for the last two and a half years. And equally by the two people that are coming back on this show tonight and then coming to Nashville. We'll talk about that all night. Uh, but first, without further ado, I want to bring on our producer. She makes the show look so great, and she looks so great, and she has a new book out. We talked about it last time. Please welcome Miss Julie Garnier. Hey, Jules. There you are. Where are you, Julie? What's that 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 vicinity you're in? Uh, I'm actually in the little office of my vet at the moment. Oh, you are. I can work from anywhere. I'm I'm in uh, Santa Maria, California, um, on my way up to San Francisco to do uh, a benefit concert tomorrow for an organization called Reef. And I'm sorry, well, I'm heading up there tomorrow. The, the organization's benefit is on Sunday, so I'm singing for them on Sunday. But um, on the way there, I stopped and my dog had some dental surgery today. Aww. Is, so she's, is, is, he, is he still under uh, the anesthesia? <laughs> she just came out of it. Um, it's not a fun thing to hold a dog while they're coming out of anesthesia for an no, hour. Not at all. It's, it's, even, um, it's even a lot less fun to hold a person when they're coming out of yeah. anesthesia. <laughs> wow, we're already going to be downer on this show. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm busy, crazy. Uh, I'm actually coming to Los Angeles. On, uh, on next Monday to come see my mother and see my brothers and to see my nieces and nephews. And my mom, who um, my brothers and I were gonna move, she's gonna move closer to my brother, Sean. So I'm coming into LA, I wanna see some friends and, and all that good stuff. And uh, anyway, it's great to be here tonight and um, I can't wait to see these guests. You ready? They're, they're, well, both of them are very good friends of ours. Both of them we've known for a long time. Both of them we've sung with. Both of them you know, we've danced with. Well, I've only just danced with Jason, but I'd like to dance with Liz sometime. I've I've danced with both. Oh, you have. I seen my new of Um, But we're going to bring you back later, and we have a little special surprise, as as they don't know, but we know, right? Right. Can't. All right. We'll go see you in a little bit. Okay. Bye. Have a fun show. Thank you, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have two incredible performers. Uh, they are going to be here in Nashville at TPAC on August twentieth with their cabaret show. Liz Calloway is a Tony nominee and award, an Emmy Award winning actress, singer, recording artist. She made her Broadway debut in Stephen Sondheim's Merrily We Roll Along. She received a Tony nomination for her performance in Baby and for five years won acclaim as Grizabella and Cats. She has also starred in the original cast of Miss Saigon, The Three Musketeers, and The Look of Love. Liz sang the Academy Award nominated song Journey to the Past in the animated feature Anastasia and is also the singing voice of Princess Jasmine in Disney's Aladdin and the King of Thieves and the return of Javert. Javar. <laughs> Javar is uh, late minutes. Uh, Jason Graw has starred on Broadway in A Grand Night for Singing, Falsetto, Stardust, Snoopy. Do black patent leather shoes really reflect up? I don't know. Off-Broadway shows include Forever Plaid, Olympus On My Mind, All in the Timing, Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, Drama Desk, nomination, Best Actor in a Musical, and many more. Jason recently played the wonderful Wizard of Oz across America in the national tour of Wicked. Please welcome from Liz, Liz, Liz Cal. There's Liz. There's Jason. Hi. Hello. How are you? You did I'm it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my Patrick Cassidy imitator. Don't I look just like you? <laughs> It's amazing. It's like looking You're at twins. a twin. It, it is truly amazing. And I was doing my Buddy Holly with these. That's what these were for me. I knew <laughs> that. And I was channeling you doing Buddy Holly. Well, I How just need, I need to have glass. I need something. Well, well, you both are I great. <laughs> I actually need them to see. So both of you would become very foggy for that. Um, <laughs> How are you guys? Hey, Liz, how are you? I'm good. I'm very happy to be talking to both of you tonight. Coming from New York, I know you got you're in Nashville and Pony. You're in California, so I'm in LA. It's so we're all in different time zones. It's it's dark for you. Uh, uh, it's kind of a little dusky for me. And you're about to have a drink, Jason. <laughs> uh, yes, it's soon to be cocktail hour. Actually, it is. <laughs> it's seven minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll be taking a pause in the middle of the program. 
for Jason. It's all, it's all good. So, you know, in, in preparing for this show tonight, because I've known you both so long. I mean, Jason, Jason, you and I have done, I don't, gosh, I've lost count with the amount of shows we've done. We go together. back. We go back. Uh, yeah, I mean, a long time. But um, but I but I but I did like some you know more detailed research about this. Both of you guys are from Chicago. I guess you both know that. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I would like well, to say, can I tell you this? Um, I was born in Elmhurst, and Liz was born in Winnetka. Well, I, Chicago actually, but then Chicago I Chicago also. Yeah, and but then you grew up in I, Winnetka. Yeah. My uh, Liz's dad, John Calloway, was like a big superstar in the news. He had like on PBS, right? He had like right. his own. He, like, John Calloway tonight. He had a, he was like, you know, television interviewer extraordinaire. And my dad, who was a, a scientist from Denmark, who was quite a brilliant man, um, was such a huge fan of John Calloway. So when he found out that Liz and I were going to college together, he, uh, he about fell over. He was very impressed. Well, and, and it, I mean, it's, it shouldn't be surprising, but your families, you guys come from, I mean, I had no idea. Everybody was like a musician. I mean, dad, your, your father, Jason, played the cello, right? Yeah, Patrick. Right. And your I sister didn't know was that. A I did not know that. And your sister a classical pianist, right? Your sister a classical pianist? Yes. Right? And, and your mother was a dancer. I knew that. I knew your mom was a dancer. Yeah, she was a dancer. And Liz, your mom, singer, pianist as well, vocal coach? Yes, yes. And then, and, of course, we, we know then, about your sister. Well, Anne yeah, Hunter she's an up, up-and-coming singer-songwriter, <laughs> my sister Anne. Whatever happened to her? You know, <laughs> she started, we moved to New York together, and she, she started out okay, but then it just she just never got the breaks. And I just, just didn't take off. No, but she still sings for fun. <laughs> 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 with you i might add how often do you guys there oh there you guys uh, are. we actually yeah. sang this uh this past weekend we did our show broadway the callaway up near saratoga springs and we're going to be in provincetown uh doing the show this weekend and nice. jason i know you and faith just performed in provincetown yeah we were just in provincetown last week um um i had to i had to perform with that hack faith prince Oh yeah, no. right. And so she wasn't available, so that's why I'm coming to Nashville. That's right. Jason. That's right. She, <laughs> we had the best time. We we ate lobster every day. It's so beautiful up there in Cape Cod. It was great. You guys, and here's the other thing. Now, so you guys met. I want to hear about this experience doing uh, Godspell off Broadway, 1980, somewhere around there. Actually, we met before that. We met in college. That's right. So, so we, wait, you were at Cincinnati Conservatory too? Yes, for a quarter. <laughs> yeah, because, well, well, Faith was there too, right, Jason? Right, Faith the, is yeah. alumni too. Yeah. So you time, met? But uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, uh, yeah, no, I left after my first quarter. But and then we were reunited then in New York, and we did, you know, um, we did a fabulous production of Godspell at Equity Library Theater. It was so bad that we called it God smell. Yes, it was. <laughs> but, you know, the good news about being in a show that is not great is that you bond with people. So mm. actually, even though we we had met in college, we didn't really know each other that well. But I do recall after I think it was the end of the week after just a horrible, horrible rehearsal, we went to this Mexican restaurant and had like a couple of pictures of sangria. <laughs> and we've been best friends ever since. <laughs> <laughs> the sangria does it to you. I know. Well, yeah, it, yeah no, we just uh, that we was... were making we were making twenty one dollars a week. I think Liz sang "Bless the Lord My Soul" and was yes. fabulous, and I sang "Learn Your Lessons Well" reprise. Yes, he was the definitive herb. herb. In, in God's spell. <laughs> Scott Bakula was Jesus. Scott Bakula was Jesus. Yeah. And he was oh, the really? hottest, hottest yeah. Jesus he was I've hot. ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, choose me. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my, my brother, Sean, just produced a pilot with him. So they're waiting to see if it gets picked up. And it's a, and if you think he, he was hot then as Jesus, he's playing a rodeo guy in this. So it's cowboy, oh, okay. jeans, boots, the whole bit. It's an obvious mm -hmm. progression. <laughs> yeah, and and Jason, I had no idea as long. As, so, you had an agent that wanted you to change your name to Gray, but you refused. 
I can't believe you've done research on me, Patrick. It's like, I didn't want to tell our audience what we bonded over, but it certainly wasn't sangria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we ever really bonded, Patrick. I'm not sure. I want to hear about this gray thing because I, I, I'm, you've been keeping things from me. Well, God, that's really like from the past, but Paige O'Hara, I had worked with Paige O'Hara at Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. You know Paige? Yeah. It was the voice of Belle in Beauty and the Beast movie. And we did Naughty Marietta at Pittsburgh. I hadn't moved to New York yet. And she had an agent, Lou Rosen. And he was like, just what you thought a New York agent, you know, he was like smoked cigars. And he talked like that. Hey, I'm Lou Rosen. And so she introduced me to her agent, Lou Rosen. And he said, you got to change your name to Gray. So I did. And it was horrible. It was very confusing because I kept the spelling G-R-A-A-E. And people were like, are you trying to be Joel Gray? And why are you spelling Gray that way? And so I just went, you know what? I'm proud of my Danish roots. I'm going to stick with them. Yes, I had heard that you refused because you wanted to honor your Danish father. Yes. I did. I was proud of my heritage. My father was, he moved to uh, the States when he was uh, 35, 36 years old. When the Nazis invaded Denmark, he escaped. Wow. I know. Crazy. Wow. Good for you. Well, I, li I like Graal much, much better. Um, <laughs> so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about your Broadway debuts. Uh, Liz, your, yours was Merrily, yeah? Merrily yeah. Graal? Yes. Well, 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 I know you've spoken to everybody about this you, the, the movie that, that Lonnie did. Uh, but did, did you guys at all, did any of you go, like have that moment where you go, I'm working with Stephen Sondheim? Or were you guys too young to even realize what that was? Oh, um, no. We, every, every day, I know, I think all of us felt like, oh, my God, we're working with Stephen Sondheim. For me, what was particularly sweet about it is the first Broadway show I ever saw was Company. And I was a kid, you know, even though I'm from Chicago, we, we actually lived in New York for five years when I was growing up. And so I saw Company, which was, of course, Sondheim, directed by Hal Prince, booked by George Firth at the Alvin Theater. And so mm -hmm. Merrily was Sondheim, Hal Prince, George Firth, Alvin Theater. So wow. it was crazy and i was a huge huge sondheim fan and um oh it was a thr it was it was thrilling and it was devastating at the same time mm -hmm. but because we ran for two weeks i always think it was like the ideal first broadway show because it was you're working with the best people in the business on something that was a failure and so it's like oh okay that's what this is you and know? it's had this this life I mean, for yes. you, right? Oh my God! But but and and now it's so popular, mm -hmm. and it's and and actually the the cast is very very close. We get together by Zoom, and um, and it is the show. I mean, who knew? I mean, we were like people were walking out of the show, and mm -hmm. and now now it's like a badge of honor that I did merrily. But back then, you know, an interesting interesting thing of the day after I was cast in Merrily and they announced the cast and they said we were going to be postponed for nine months because Hal Prince had to direct an opera. The next day I got cast in Godspell. Oh. It was like a really good 24 hours. Wow. You know, I forgot about that. Yeah. you know, it's funny too about Sondheim shows. I think when they first come out, there's a lot of those, you know, uh, shows well, assassins. You know how many people walked out of assassins? You know how many people walked out of Sweeney Todd in, in previews? You know, it's That's it's possible. Uh, but right, later right? on, yeah. But then then they'll go like, oh yes, I was there. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And Jason, your Broadway debut, do you uh, Grand Night for Singing? No, it wasn't. But uh, you were doing so well up till that point. I know. Well, you know. <laughs> Got some bad information. Liz threw that one to me. <laughs> no, she did. What was your debut? Then? It was thanks to Merrily We Roll Along that we opened at the Alvin Theater. Do black patent leather shoes really reflect oh. up? We had, there were two like shows for young people at that time that everybody wanted to be in. Merrily first and do black patent leather shoes really reflect up? And that, <laughs> that had been a hit in Chicago. It had been running for five years at, in Summit which was outside of Chicago in a small theater. 
And then we tried our the Broadway version out in Philadelphia, and it was a huge hit. The reviews were great. Everybody loved it. It was about life in Catholic school based on these novels by John Powers. And I was like, God, it's really good, but I don't, I mean, I don't think it's a good show, but the reviews loved it and the audiences loved it. And then my friends from New York would come to Philadelphia and they'd go, mm. and I'd say, but look at these reviews. And so we came to New York and we weren't, we were going to open at the uh, Brooks Atkinson. And then because of Merrily, because of little Johnny Jones, because of Prince and the Aviator, like all these shows closed. And so the Alvin Theater was available. This was only months after I saw Liz. I saw a second preview and closing night of Merrily because I was, you know, so close with Liz and I loved the show. And um, so we opened and when we, <laughs> the uh, New York Times review said, this show was a huge hit in Philadelphia, which shows you that the Liberty Bell is not the only thing that's cracked. Oh! Well, and wait, did it oh. did it run, did it run longer than Maryland? No, but no, wait, well, no, well, see, no. We ran shorter. We had two weeks of previews and five performances, so oh, it was yeah. shorter. It was a bigger flop. So you well, win. <laughs> well, be, since that wasn't your Broadway debut, we thought we'd show the show that should have been your Broadway debut. <laughs> So we have a little clip from uh, uh, this little show, I guess from the Tony Awards, from the Grand Night for Singing. Take a look at this. Oh, my God. Not the Tony Awards. <laughs> the Grand Night for Singing, the stars are bright above. The earth is a glow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love. Maybe it's more than the earth, shiny and silvery blue. Maybe the reason I'm feeling this way has something to do with you. Falling, 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 falling. La 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 la. la. Now, I can't remember ever seeing your hair quite that dark. <laughs> and it was natural, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how long, did Grand, how, how long did Grand Nights for Singing run? Well, we opened that at, um, it was a beautiful show. We opened that at Rainbow and Stars, if you remember that. Oh, Go sure. Yes, yeah. we had that I still remember series. that. And uh, Liz and I worked, did an Irving Berlin show up at Rainbow and Stars with Kay Ballard and uh, Ron Raines. And that one, uh, we opened and it was a huge hit. And then they moved it to the Roundabout Theater. And so we had like a three month run at the Roundabout, which was, Ooh. it was delightful. Great music. That was Liz, beautiful. You know, and it was great arrangements too. Fred Wells. Yeah. Liz, did you know? No. Did I tell you, did we talk about that I auditioned to replace Todd Graff and Baby. Did you, did I tell you this? I and, don't and I, I and I wanted it more than anything in the world. They flew me to New York, Richard Malpe, who I later directed my mom show that, that I produced. Um, and, I, and I reminded him of to it, yeah. And I so wanted it because I'd seen the show the night before my audition. And I, I and you were so blew my mind. I mean, you blew my mind that I was like, it was, the, it was one of those ones that I was begging on my knees to get, and they gave it to Lon Hoyt. Oh. And Lon, and Lon ended, and I ended up doing um, uh, 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 Leader of the Pack together. Um, but anyway, so I... Oh, so, wow, uh, that's, uh, you know, wow. then we would have danced together. Yes, we would have. You, you know. Patrick, you, you would have been too hot for that character. What are you talking about? I think you would be too hot for Danny. You know, you were I, was, well, my, I, I, my, I went gray at about 20. I would have let it go gray. I was coloring it down. 
Uh, we have a picture, do we not, Julie, of, 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 of Liz and I think Todd from Merrily? Do we? Oh, God, get ready for a bad oh, There we go. Oh, no, that's not too bad. Yeah. Cute. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. We were children. Did, did you <laughs> love, was that everything for you? Well, you got a Tony nomination for it. It had to be pretty astounding. It was such a wonderful experience, and it was um, – I loved doing the show. That's how I met Dan. Dan saw the first preview and and fell in love. And he, yeah, he was he was like a stalker and uh, and oh, the there baby, he is. there he is. Oh God, thank God he's not watching. He'd be mortified. Um, but oh no, baby was was so special and it kind of spoiled me. I thought, oh, this is what it's like. And, mm -hmm. and but it was that part was really one in a million and. Um, Jason was my date to the Tony Awards. Oh my God, we really! <laughs> yes. Oh my God, we had so much fun. We my have a funny story. Could that the story? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was I don't remember all the girls that were up for best featured actress, but um, Lila Kudrova was one of them. And so when they go, and the winner for best featured actress in a musical is. And they go and Liz and I were I was squeezing Liz's hand and I was pulling her up we were like Lila Kadrova and we were like damn I thought it was going to be Liz oh. <laughs> I remember that my son Nicholas he I told him that when he was quite young that was like his favorite story oh I love the Lila Kadrova thing I remember though there was a party afterwards I mean Jason was the her, it was like the prom I never went to. And Jason was the perfect date. And because we really did have a lot of fun. I remember, I think the party afterwards was, was it the Waldorf or something? Yeah, I think it was. And we were entering and we were going to, I think we had to go down <laughs> some stairs. And Jason was trying to get me to like, fall down the stairs so that I'd get press. Remember that? And then, and then, um, you, so that you, I would get press so that. I oh, would. you said it was so I would get press all these years later. The truth you know, is you know, it's funny. He and I have worked together so many times. He's actually kicked me down the stairs many times <laughs> just to get press. Are there going to be Sorry. stairs on the set of when we're performing? Uh, yes, so I yeah. want to be prepared. No, no falling off the orchestra pit because it will be raised up. Okay. <laughs> he also, um, Jason also went up to Jennifer Holiday. Didn't you go up to Jennifer Holiday and yes. say that you had worked for the designer who had designed her dress? I he just totally lied. Was, <laughs> I was drunk. I was going up to everybody. Dorothy Loudon. Dorothy Loudon was so funny, and all these people. I was just like <laughs> chatting. With oh my god, we did have fun. We did we have fun. Time. I was so well, proud of that. Won. You've done a huge amount of animation, haven't you? Like an animated movie. Yeah. Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, The Swan Princess, Aladdin and the King of Thieves, The Lion King 2, Despicable Me 2, and Anastasia, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, I was very, I really was, it was sort of like the golden age of, of animated movies during that time. So yeah, it was, I love doing that. And actually, it's amazing how many people particularly Anastasia and Swan Princess, how, how many people always come up to me and, and say how much they love that and, you know, love those movies. Does it force you to have to sing at Journey to the Past all the time? It's, it doesn't force me to. I love the song. So, the song. I, I, oh, I'm, I'm very happy to do that. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be singing it um, in Nashville Partly because I can't tell you what else I'm going to be singing because I don't know yet. But we did we filmed a little something for Instagram. And it's like it's like yeah, just to promote the show. It's like yeah, sing it's something you're going to do. And so I was like, oh, I'll just sing something from Anastasia. I was like, oh, okay, now I have to do. And I and I, I don't have to do it, but I do. I love I love singing. Yeah. Well, we have a little preview for our audience. So take a look at this. Ladies. Oh God. One hope, then another Who knows where this road may go Back to who I was On to find my future Things my heart still needs to know Yes, let this be your sign Let this road be mine Let it lead me to my past
Yeah. Wow, I've never seen that before. That was from a concert we did in, that was a big benefit um, in Orlando. And full um, orchestra, too. Yeah. Wow. Seemed like That's Madison not, Square Garden or something. I know, it was amazing. It was a benefit to help. Um, it was uh, shortly after the Pulse nightclub shooting. And it was mm. like a Broadway for Orlando concert. It was an amazing audience. Well, I've never we seen that before. We will not have a full orchestra in. Uh, in Wait, in what? Ryback yeah. sounds like a full orchestra. That's right. Alex yes, Ryback yes, is a full orchestra. Yes, Alex Ryback is. And you'll lead the applause, so it'll sound like that, Patrick. Yes, I will. Yes, okay. I will. Do you know that Alex played it? Do you know that Alex played at my wedding? Did you know that at my no. reception? He played no. piano for me. Yep. Yeah. I'll tell you that story another time. Jason, I want to talk to you about something that's very familiar to the both of us, and it's the music man. Remember that little show that we did together? Yeah. Twice, I think. <laughs> uh, we did it twice. Was it fun working with me? <laughs> oh, this is so awkward. Wow, this is like really putting me on the spot right now. Uh, <laughs> do I be honest or do I be PC? Uh, <laughs> okay, don't tell me. Um, well, it was fun for me to work with you. I can tell you that. I've never yes, actually had more really fun. Enjoyed, I really loved working with you, Patrick. <laughs> Where did you do this? Where did you do it? We had a ball. We did it at, uh, well, we did the 50th anniversary concert production of it with the Hartford Symphony with Patrick yes. as Harold Hill. And he was perfect. I mean, you were the perfect Harold Hill. And well, seriously. I had, I had good genetics from the woman who played Miriam. <laughs> yeah. And she you know, played in Peru, Shirley Jones. Oh, yes. wow. Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. And then we also did it at Sacramento Music Service. Yes, yeah, in the round. Um, and, and you know, Liz. I mean, I don't, Liz, to be honest, I don't know how you guys, when you do your shows, show together, when I work with Jason, it, literally, there is nobody I laugh for. I can't stop laughing the entire time I'm with him. I can't. And, and, and that's even after the sangria or before. <laughs> that was a problem. It was a problem. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, there's no one who makes me laugh more. It's always, um, I'm pretty good on stage. I mean, because I am professional. But, uh, <laughs> but oh, my God, no. I mean, just the, that's why I miss, I miss Honey so much because it's just we don't. I call him Honey, by the way. It's, I never call him Jason. H -O and I don't know. We call each other Honey, and I'm not. I don't oh, even Honey. know. Honey. H-O-O-O. -O -O -O. I'm not sure where it started. Oh, we sang a cut song from Merrily on a Lost in Boston album, and um, Honey. Honey, but I think I think that was but before that. I think we've been calling that's, each other Honey so for years. And, 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 I, and I call him Horny. You know, well. <laughs> <laughs> it just fits so well. Don't you agree? <laughs> if the shoe fits, if the shoe fits, where? Yeah. Yes, we we had fun, and and I will say that I it was amusing to hear me try to get through Shapoopy. <laughs> and that would make anybody laugh. And Patrick used to love to watch me stick my chin out and try to get those high A's out. Shapoopy, shapoopy, shapoopy. Well, so you know, good. it's so funny, Jason. It's so funny that that, that you mentioned that because uh, Julie has some some lyrics that she'd like to bring up to you. Oh. Um, Julie, do you have those those lyrics? So <laughs> you, <laughs> can can you can you just give us a little part of the bridge of that song, sure. Jason? Now, wait, wait, wait. Old, now, you have to do it in the original key. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. I, this was not part of my contract for this podcast. <laughs> original key. Now, little old Sal was a no gal, as anyone can see. Look at her now. She's a go gal, as air only goes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you this? So, the first time that I, I've done Marcellus, which is a part I never wanted to play. And I've gotten offered it a couple times at the Muni and someplace else. And I was like, no, I don't ever want to have to sing Shapoopy ever. And so, then all of a sudden, now I've done it three times, and you were part of. Two of them. The first time I did it was at the Hollywood Bowl with Kristen Chenoweth, who's part of the T-Pac series, and uh, uh, Eric McCormick. And that was the very first time. And I tried to get in my contract that Chapoopy would be lowered because it's too high for me. And the conductor, John Malcheri, said, absolutely not. We, we don't lower things. So I was like, oh. 
Okay. And so we did the first sing through at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> on a Tuesday at the Hollywood Bowl rehearsal studios. And I had to sing Shapoopy in the original key. <laughs> and after I finished, it was so horrible. After I finished, John Mauchery said, yeah, we'll be taking that down a step. <laughs> But I had to humiliate myself in front of the whole cast. First. Maybe we well, should put that in our show. I think it'd be great. You it's, could do it daringly I, well, slow. Liz, you, you, but but I have to say, and I was unaware of this until this evening, Mr. Graw, you've moved up. Uh, we have a little clip of you not doing Shapoopy. Take a look at this. <laughs> well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player, certainly mighty proud to say. I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help you cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Do you ever take and try and find an ironclad leave to yourself from a three rail billiard shop? But just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a walk like game. I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that slot. The first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. First, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And Yay! Who recorded that and put that online in person? <laughs> we, that was on Sobradetsky's Broadway cruise. In I know. But oh, the, I wondered where that was. Well, you know, it's the, always nice when something is filmed from like below. And what, what, what <laughs> was, was very great. interesting is that all the people that were the river citizens, they all looked like 75 and above. <laughs> <laughs> it was the oldest cast, wasn't it? It was. They were actually, uh, they had bought tickets to be on that cruise. They were all part of uh, Seth's posse. And uh, so, and uh, Seth asked me two days before if I would, if I knew, happened to know trouble. And I went, well, I did it once somewhere. <laughs> oh my God. And then you just did it? I did it because, you know, I'm game. And yes, I was the youngest one on stage besides Seth. But you know, the you're Seth, really Seth uh, Rudetsky, who many people know has um, from Sirius XM, and he has this Broadway cruise. And, and Jason just, I just did it, his Broadway cruise two weeks ago in Norway. And one of the, the last night, you sing a song with the passengers, and I sang, Bless the Lord, my soul with them. Get oh. out. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I was, a little, I was a little worried about that high note at the end. It was like, woo. Full circle. But, Full That's circle. a full circle moment. Yeah. Liz, how long did you do Grisabella? Um, on and off for five years. Not like, yeah. you know, they were, oh, my. Cute. They were wow. um, the, they were really great to me that in, I think it was also because it was such a long running show that if I had, like I did Anastasia, during that and so they would give me a week off to go to los angeles and and record a song um i did a the original sibling revelry with my sister Anne during that time so it mm. wasn't it wasn't five years all at once you know you came but to my 40th birthday party i did i took the show off and surprised jason for my that was birthday. really really that was, so and that you, was amazing were you the first replacement to betty no, um, I think Lori Beachman was. Oh, she was. That's right. Yes, yes. and yes. Lilius White did it for a short period of time. And Lonnie Anderson. Lon yeah, Lonnie Ackerman. Ackerman, that's right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I would have. Now that I would. That Linda, I would have paid money Linda, for. <laughs> Linda Carter. I heard Linda Carter was in there. <laughs> She was so moving. She was so moving. <laughs> but I actually replaced Lori. Lori, oh, you did. Yeah, I did. Great, great voices. Um, well, I love you know I love doing cats. I I didn't necessarily. I I loved doing it more than I loved it being in the audience for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I but cats really surprised me in that it was it was um it was really. A fun show to do. And Liz, by the way, you and I saw it together for the first time at the Actors Fund performance. <gasps> the very first we Actors did. I'm just because I was just now thinking that I think we did see it together. Yeah. Yeah. 
back in the day. And then what we, did we do uh, afterwards? We probably went to Carumba's or we did something. I'm sure we drank. Um, I just <laughs> remember, I because I had to say, I knew so many Grizabellas. I had so many Grizabella friends and Liz. I'd so, I had to bring all my, you know, my mother and different people to see Liz do it. And Jan Horvath did the tour and Mary. Right. I saw Jan do the tour. Oh, my God. I saw it way too many times. And that part with the whole pi the pirate cat section, I learned to just get up during that time and go to the bar and, you know, just like, just <laughs> dismiss myself. Cause that whole pirate section was just like, ugh. but I love, I actually really loved the show other than the pirate section. Liz, do you know Jason, you know, Jason's greatest line? I've still, I've stolen it. I've stolen a lot of lines, but when he comes to see somebody in a show, uh, one of his friends, obviously, is he comes backstage and the first thing he says, oh, you were in this? <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I really don't. Sometimes, though, I really don't know when I've seen you because you disappear into the character so yes, so so much that I don't know it's you. <laughs> so this is rather good. I have okay. So we play a little game on this show, you guys. And this I is didn't know this. I was not prepared. It's I was not, it's not a very small, track. small bit. I need um, some Tito's. Yes. And we're gonna bring we're gonna bring Julie back on to play this game because we've never played it. So come on, on Jules. I is thought this Julie was at the game? vet. Is Julie at the vet? <laughs> Still at the vet. So, so the name of the game is called Remember the Lyric. And how the game normally goes is that I would give you a lyric from a song you sang in a show you did. But today, for the first time, we're gonna do this a little differently. We're gonna have a little competition. We're going to all sing a song. Julie and I are a team and Liz, you and Jason are a team. And what will and Julie will start. I'll go second. Then we'll go Jason. Then we'll go Liz. I'll point to you when it's your turn to sing. We'll see how far we can get. Okay. So and we'll let Julie. I'll put your name on the screen when it's your turn. Okay. To sing. Excuse me. Just one minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> All right, I gotta pick a good key for all involved because I'm an I'm alto. I'm so confused <laughs> what this is, but we'll figure I'm not it sure out. I understand either, but Liz, just go with it. We're and Jason, we're, we have to win. Okay, we <laughs> what have do we get, to by win. The way? What's the winner we, get? You get, you get. Well, we'll see. Sangria. Brad, no, we don't do no. We, we're we're we've sangria. we're we way moved. past sangria. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Go ahead, Jules. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be, there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's gras. And lonely, I just pick up my chin and grin and stop. The sun will come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may. Everybody. I love you. I love you. Wow. Liz well, and Jason have won the first round. Yes, you have. Uh, you guys are. You guys are sort of, Jules, what happened? I thought you knew we were going to go on. No. <laughs> no, I didn't realize we were going to go on. He's still under hey, anesthesia. This is your game, right? This is. Yeah. <laughs> We've if never done it like that before. We've never done it. It's the first time. And, this, and we could see it just, it just, it was perfect. Uh, Jason, Jason, what's it? We were trying to get you to sing that high part again. We can't get you to use that upper register of your voice. Yeah, no, I'm saving it for Tennessee. I'm, I'm actually saving it for Nashville. I don't want to blow it all out tonight. Yes, you know, the, uh, the title of our show, it's, it's like it's an intimate mm -hmm. evening of Liz Calloway and Jason Graw singing down the octave. That's the full <laughs> title. <laughs> Liz and Jason, get down. At Jason, last. 
would you do for us, Jason, just a little tiny bit? Because I know you um, did a lot of voiceover. It's Liz did all the animation stuff. You weren't you the voice of Lucky Charm? Uh, yeah, for five and a half years, I was uh, Lucky the Leprechaun. Can Can you do just a little for us so we can hear? Yes, but I will have to get a uh, writer. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> that, okay, ready? I have to channel Lucky. Wait, look. Wait, can you see this? Oh, no, I can't turn it around. Yeah. You... Oh, yes. There he is. I have more boxes of cereal that people have gotten to me as Lucky the Leprechaun. Uh, <laughs> they're me eighth magical marshmallow shape. It's magically delicious. Oh. See how high he went? Did you see how high? I know. I heard the upper register. It's and, still there. And Jason, give us the voice of the Western Union MoneyGram guy. Oh, God. I miss that job so much. I think I did an hour of work, and it was on for five years. Everybody needs some money sometime. Everybody needs some cash somehow. It was a great gig. Wow. Ranking wow. in the box. Ranking yeah, in the box. It's, it's in my range still. <laughs> <laughs> you still sing that in the original key, right? <laughs> I think so. Could I sing? I, you didn't ask, but could I sing my, my solo line in Beauty and the Beast? Oh, I'd love to hear it. Yes. What is your solo line? Good day. <laughs> that was... That was from the movie? That was your one That's solo me. Line? Uh, oh, if you listen to the opening, oh, that's, I mean, uh, that's my now solo line. In <laughs> I, can't believe there wasn't a, I can't believe there wasn't a spinoff. I know, right? Uh, you know, I, I want you all to know something that uh, was incredible. Julie and I talked about it beforehand. I know we've all talked about it probably with Jason at times. But, but, but for a minute, can we all talk about Jason's wedding? Which I have to tell you was one of the greatest moments ever. Uh, look at look at that. Faith Prince there. Faith married you both. She did. Glenn and, and Jason, I've said this to you many times. I had so much more fun at your wedding than I did even at my eye. And I'm very <laughs> happily married. But your wedding, I mean, the stars that came out and sang, Miss Calloway, Jules, you know, there she is. Look at that. Look at Carol Cook and Nancy Dusso and Joan Worley in the back. Liz oh. sang. Liz, I was a mess when Liz sang. I was. I, I was a mess. Was a I was like, how am I going to possibly sing when I? I can't sing when I. It's really hard to sing when I think you will all agree if you're crying. It's just your voice, your throat goes. And I was just like, I was. Then I was like, oh my god, I'm never going to get through this song. It was such a beautiful wedding. It was, it was such a beautiful wedding. You, and you, you all, still, you yeah. are going to still pay. You, you said you were going to pay me. And yeah, I, no, it's, it's going to happen. I'm just, I'm saving up because your fee has gotten so big. Okay, all right. Because no. I just, I still, I was still waiting for that. <laughs> so <years>. like, <laughs> no, I told you I'd pay you if. What, Julie? She has Venmo. Yes, I do have Venmo. And Jason, by the way, sang at my wedding, and he oh. sang longer longer than right and then but he, if it had, had turned of course it turned into like a strip tease kind of a thing it was just That's all, all, it all was, his numbers do everyone i've ever been involved you with know, you got it, you got it. he ends up taking off something uh Ju and julie for one, julie for one second go back to the picture of, of liz singing i want to show you saying jason so so look all the way to the left of the picture. You see the side of the face of that boy? That boy is my son, Cole. That's Jason. Cole. Oh, my God. He's he, never was at, he was at the wedding. And Jason, if you remember, he and I and you did the Sadder But Wiser Girl. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was so <laughs> amazing. Everybody yeah, sang. Yeah, it was great. Remember. Julie sang Gimme Gimme. Which That's I think right. is a perfect wedding song, <laughs> and, and from Thoroughly Modern Millie, and you guys sang uh, the sadder but wiser girl. It ended up being a show. It was like an after party thing, mm -hmm. and it was just supposed to be people just kind of singing around the piano outside. It was in our backyard, you know, so we could save money. And um, it ended up being a show, and I became the host of the show, and it was it was really wild. And it was my friends. I just sat and sobbed. 
and I was also loaded, but it was great. You know, I actually missed that part. I see. I had to leave because I took the red eye back to sing at a, a wedding the next morning in New York with David Loud. You guys know David Loud, the sure, musical loud. director? Yeah, director, so yes. he was getting married. So it was like. The wedding singer. So I was the wedding singer. Oh, my God. I got platinum status on United Airlines. That, you, that year you because so of that. I, it was unbelievable. I was like, oh God, but I need the miles. So sure, I'll sing at your wedding. <laughs> Liz, I just want to sure. show you one quick thing. I just loaded this photo. Patrick, I'm just going to hijack your show for a second. I love that. <laughs> Liz, I want to show you one photo. I just loaded it into the system. Give me one second. See if this shows. That's me. Oh. <gasps> I'm a Grizz too. Oh my God. Where did you do, where did you Where did you do Grizz? I did the Fifth National right after it closed on Broadway. I, oh, I actually was, it was actually Jenny. That's me as Jenny. Um, and I was the Grizz oh. first cover, but I went on you, a lot. You were heavier then. Yeah, well, <laughs> I bet you sang that song um, incredibly well. Oh, I, I would have loved um, to hear, hear you sing was, that. You, and you were 100% right. It is so much more fun doing the show than watching it because I'd be swung out of the show every month to watch. Because, you know, when you're doing a role in the show, except for Grizabella, anytime she would come on stage, you'd turn your back. Right. So so I, you could wouldn't... Never, I could never watch her blocking during the show. So they would swing me out once a month so I could watch the show and track her blocking. Um, and see where she would go on stage because I otherwise I'd oh, forget. Oh wow! We've all been in the shows where it's more fun to be in than to watch. Patrick, what was oh. what was your show that was way more fun to do than to probably watch it? Oh gosh! Um, wow, well, gosh! I don't know. Uh, Music Man was was fun to do. It was fun to watch. It was hard to do. Yeah, and it was hard to watch you. No, it was fun. To <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> no, no, I had more fun backstage with you than I did on the stage. So, so we had a good well, time. I think everyone who's worked with Jason will say that. <laughs> they yeah. often do. They often do. I, can I say this one thing? I just, uh, this memory that I have of when we did this in Sacramento and David Cassidy came to see the show. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you and your mom were starring in it and it was so moving that Patrick was playing Harold Hill and your mom was playing Mrs. Peru. And you came out at the end and taught, you know, did your little beautiful till there was you section. And it was so beautiful. And you talked about that your mom was pregnant with you during the movie. I mean, the whole thing was just, you know, it was a life experience, but I think it was a Friday night. David came to see the show and he was late. Mm hmm. And he made quite an entrance, like what, 15, 20 minutes into the show. Everything kind of stopped and everybody stopped watching. It, what, how big Sacramento Music Circus? Like 2,400 people or something like that. Everybody left the stage to watch David Cassidy come in. <laughs> kind of. Elvis had entered the building. Yeah. Oh my God, it was an amazing moment. It was such an amazing moment. We had a, we had a great time. It, it it was fun. Jules, I'll see you in, in a few minutes. We'll uh, I want to talk more about the, the Nashville at the end. So guys, let's talk about uh, uh, the twentieth uh, uh, on August twentieth. Um, we are so excited to have you guys here. Is it your first time? Both of you guys playing? There you are playing uh, Nashville. First time for both of you. It's my. It's going to be my second time. I did a number of years ago a an Andrew Lloyd Webber concert with the Nashville Symphony. Yeah, sure. Enough. A long time ago, but this will be my first time coming and doing like a cabaret performance. And and you, Jason? Uh, well, Patrick, I uh, I worked at Opryland USA. For oh, older listeners out there, um, uh, in nineteen. I said 1977, but it was actually 1978. And uh, I did a show called Broadway, which was at the Grand Ole Opry House. Wow. And uh, so I have not performed there since 1978. I guess I was so talented, nobody wanted me back. Well, welcome <laughs> back. We, we're going to welcome you with open arms. And so you guys know, uh, 
as I told you about, if you're going to be in the big Broadway house, which is the Jackson Theater, it's a 2,500 seat theater, uh, and but it's it's cabaret on stage, so the whole audience will be on the stage at these beautiful cabaret tables, tables with bars on both sides of the stage. We raise the orchestra pit a little bit. You guys and Alex will be on that orchestra pit, face to the back wall, and the lighting is amazing. So we create this really intimate evening. Uh, this is our second year in a row. It's become a really nice, nice thing. We did it last year when you know, nobody was going into a theater, and we brought people back to the theater. So we're excited. We're so excited to have you guys. It's going to be Can't fun. Wait. We're, we're so, so excited, and you know, I love to get, getting to sing with Jason. And you know, this will be the first time that we've done anything, right? That we've done a since show together before. since pre-pandemic. So. Yeah. It's going to be very special. Oh, no. And it sounds amazing. I love the idea that we're going to be, that everyone's going to be on stage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And, uh, and, and oh, I, we play one more game on this show. Uh-oh. This, this, uh, although I'm very afraid with the two of you. So the name of this game is called You Become the Host. So for one question, you guys get to ask me anything you want. And I'll preface this by saying... Patty LuPone said to me, she says, so Patrick, how many women have you vetted? Ah. And yeah. I responded with, well, only one of any significance, and that's my wife. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. This is why you've gotten to where you are today. Yeah, so please, please don't stare in that direction. But by all means, Liz, you're, you're up first. I think I, I think I should let Jason go first. Okay, Jason, go first. Oh, my God. Just give me more time. <laughs> Patrick, growing up in a superstar family, you have, you have had, like, the most longevity of everybody in your family. And to what do you attribute that to? I mean, you, it's a family of superstars, the Cassidy's. Mm -hmm. So what do you attribute that to? You know, it's, it's funny. I, I mean, I know the theater, that I started in theater. That I started in the theater. Because, you know, I mean, I had the opportunity. I had a lot of record companies that wanted to sign me just because I was the next Cassidy and didn't know if I could sing or any of that stuff. And, and I chose specifically to go to New York and study and I got Pirates of Penzance, and because I started that way and kept doing that regionally, you know, I totally convinced that that's the reason why I'm still doing. It. You know, it's I really, I mean, whereas Sean and David, you know, they they really talented, both really really talented, but got the curse of that overnight success and then had to reinvent themselves. Sean, thank God, you know became a writer producer and you know he just had New Amsterdam for the last five five years on NBC and and now he's um and for the first time I don't know if you guys know this for the first time in 40 years he's gone out on the road because he had a number one record and a number four record and a number eight record I mean he had some big hits from 77 to 80. So for the first time he was very smart and now he's going out there and he's playing you know he played the El Rey Theater in LA a few months ago. He played he's played a lot of stuff so and then, but unfortunately, David sort of, you know, kept trying to become what was created for him in 1970. Right. Right. And that you could never, never do. So that's, yeah. that's it. interesting. Good mm. question. That is a really good question. Thanks. Um, what yeah. is the most, what's the most important to you thing that you're, that your mom ever taught you? Oh, it's a great question, Lou. Wow. Line. She <laughs> taught me. She taught me. <laughs> you know, she taught me to shop and I to target. She taught me to she taught me to be grateful and not get carried away with any success, any, you know, uh, materialistic thing. My mother does shop at Target. My mother never cared about being a star. 
And she sort of conveyed that to all my brothers and myself. It wasn't about that. It was just about what is most important. And for me, family was most important. That was what, what was most important to my mom. That's what is most important to Sean and to Ryan. You know, so I think she instilled that sense of, you know, as Sean and I said, we always said, the business is a joke. And when you get the joke, <laughs> that's what we really enjoy. It's mm. a joke. Mm. What we get to do is, is a gift, that we, what we get to do. But if you believe it at any time, especially when the success part comes, you, you get caught in that really dangerous area, you know? And Sean and my mom always lived that. She always lived in, I mean, you guys know, you guys have both met her. Jason, you hung out with her. She's not, she never took it seriously. She did her job and she did it well, but the other things that were more important than something. Yeah. yeah. Mom, I, I said that for you, mom. I know you're watching. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Listen, I adore you both. I can't wait to see you both. You guys are extraordinary. You'll be so great together. And uh, August 20th. August 20th. We can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. The By the way, most of your lineup is from Oklahoma, which is very strange. I'm from Oklahoma. Sam Harris is from Oklahoma. Kristen Chenowitz from Oklahoma. Isn't that odd, like this summer? Yes, and I, I didn't even realize that. And now you're embarrassing me that I haven't done that detective work. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, because Liz and I were born, you know, we were born in Chicago. But then, you know, my parents got divorced. And I'm going to go, I'll tell that whole story in the show. It'll be really uplifting for everybody. <laughs> But uh, yeah, then I grew up in Tulsa, you know, and so, uh, but yes, yeah, Sam and Kristen also were in that, in oh, that. Oklahoma, so cool. here we come. Guys, I uh, love you both. Thank you so love much. Love you. you. Thank you for having us. Keep, keep posting on your, on your Instagrams and your social media platforms. Tell us, tell us, I want your fans, I want everybody to come. I know uh, a bunch of your family members bought Jason, did they not? That was great. They're coming. Yeah, I've got uh, 10, 10 uh, of my family members are coming up from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Oh, that's Woo awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You Liz. are. You, no, you are. But you who are. won? But you who are. won? You are. You are. Bye, guys. All right, bye. Tito, Tito's bye, honey. time. <laughs> bye, honey. <laughs> Miss Julie, come back and join me. What a good show, huh? You're on mute, Jules. You're on mute. You're on mute. Jules, can't hear you. I am on mute. You're right. <laughs> I, I was just saying they are just delightful. And I've just been sitting here laughing the whole time. Jason is the least funny person I've ever known. I know. Um, I know. And, and when, uh, I run this show, when I run this show back, you're going to see me like this the entire show. Ready? <laughs> I was, I was at one point I looked at myself because I, I couldn't stop. And it's, and that's how it is with him all the time. I can't exactly. stop laughing. I forget my lyrics. I forget my lines and I'm just laughing at him. Oh, yeah. they're, they're the amazing. Working, working with both of them um, is the best. I did, I did hair. I did the concert version of hair on Broadway with Liz and um, oh. Jason and I have done a bunch of different things together and he's, they're both just delightful human beings. I just, Love well, them. August 20th, like I said, uh, at TPAC, we're going to have Liz and Jason with us. There they are. Uh, Cabaret on stage, our second season. It's going to be fantastic. They're so good together, guys. Get your tickets. Come on out. You're going to have a great time. Um, experience the Cabaret on stage because it's really wonderful. And I also want to plug uh, our season. You know, you know, um, we, we have an incredible cast. So there's Studio 10 season. If you look there, there's Christmas Carol. We're going to do Aida in concert. I've got Jackie Burns, uh, the longest running Elphaba on Broadway. I've got Rex Smith coming in to play Zozer. I've got John Robert Hall, who is Fierro. He's the big recording career. He's coming to play Rodemais. And an incredible cast here, including a star on the brink playing Aida by the name of Maya Riley. We're going to talk about her. So we got a lot of good stuff going on. Jules, love you. Love to see you. Your book. Tell us all about your book. You know, I've told you I'm reading that passage, that one quote from Harvey Firestein, the first day of rehearsal. And I'm gonna and I want to give books to everybody. So can we do that? Yeah, well, we'll we'll talk after. Yeah, it's called the Stage Actors Handbook. Um, this is the graphic from the last show we talked about it. Good. But well, yeah, it is. 
actually did uh, Michael Kostroff, my co-author and I um, just got back from New York. We did a book signing at um, Drama Bookshop in Manhattan. Um, and it was just magical. We read from the book and we took question and answer period and we signed copies for everyone. And we signed an extra 20 copies for people. And they're, they're in the career section of the drama oh. bookshop. And somebody just posted yesterday who I don't know. This is like the first time that like she posted on Instagram, you know, was able to make it to drama bookshop to buy a copy of the stage actor's handbook before getting on the train to head back to Jersey A complete stranger, like with a picture of her with the book and like reading it on the train. It was just Julie, thrilling. Julie, it should be re required reading for actors. That's why. And I think every producer, should get a nice bunch of them and give them out as gifts, as which is what we're going to talk about after the show. Awesome show tonight, Jules. Thank you. Thank My you. Pleasure. Learn all the learn all the lyrics next time to tomorrow. It'll be a big hit next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. That's our <laughs> show for this evening, guys. Thank you so much for being here and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next month with Kristen Chenoweth.